hello chess friends i am back again and today i am going to cover a video about a movie i was watching last night the losing defense it was by marilyn gores and movie is fantastic but uh, they have slightly overdone it so uh, i think we are going to look at two games in this video and one is about uh, final game from this movie the movie was released in year 2000 starring john turotto as losing a tormented chess grandmaster who finally jumps out of his window during the climax of this movie interestingly this movie is based on 1930 russian novel the defense by vladimir nabokov and this novel in turn was inspired by a very old Russian or maybe Soviet silent film Chess Fever released in 1925 so it the movie was post uh, revolution movie in Soviet Russia so maybe there is some communist influence in this movie Chess Fever that uh, inspired Vladimir Nabokov to write this novel The Defense main character of this movie an eccentric grandmaster called Alexei Ivanovich Sasalyuzin is maybe based on a Kurt von Bandarbalen um, maybe i cannot pronounce it perfectly but he was a german nobleman bardel pen a chess master that really played well during the first half of last century and he is also famous for his game with first world chess champion william steinitz and another game uh, and that game is uh, from hastings tournament in england in 1895 very famous tournament there is also a book written a book uh, kind of manual that was written by some chess expert so that is also available over the internet i have included a link below this video for that and there is a myth surrounded death of this german grandmaster as few believe that it was an accident but many of them think it was a suicide so movie is set in early 1920s and begins with lucin arriving early at some palace turned hotel in northern italian city where they are going to play matches exhibition matches and blindfold like simmus and other things and then they are going to play for the final event and lucin is waiting for his uh, rival italian master who is going to be his main rival in this championship Italian master is much more flamboyant and much more sane compared to eccentric Lucin but uh, Lucin manages to win and reach the final with this Dottore Salvatore Turati an Italian grandmaster and then Lucin is shown as little bit eccentric genius or something but they surely have overdone it he lacks social skills and do strange things and po provoked and like i have seen few grandmasters and i have gone to some chess tournaments but i have never seen anybody like lucin ever before so they have overdone it a bit and i have never seen a chess grandmaster dancing in the rain for no particular reason so there are few things they have overdone it many chess players may like this movie but surely can appreciate it but there is nothing for chess in it there is no opening theory or some positions or something apart from the final game that is really very interesting so i am going to cover that game so in the time crunch they made some move and then after game was adjourned as they used to do during those years and then they continue the play on another day after home analysis but uh, that is not possible right now because of uh, computers advancement in 
engine technology and very strong chassis engine so it is also pointless to do it right now but during those days it was very common to edge and games so they edge and the game and after that game will be played on another day so another game also very famous game i am going to cover in this video is uh, william steinitz versus kurt von baderben that was played in 1895 during this hastings tournament and there is also myth surrounding this game so in this tournament uh, wardel went finish 7th over of 7th and feels very well i think won that tournament and maybe title of this movie is also a pun as losing in russian rhymes with losing in english so <laughs> maybe <laughs> that is like losing defense <laughs> in english so let's have a look at the first game from the movie final position so out position on the board right now lusin is an exchange up but a pawn down and last move played by white was knight on E5. So now Lucian's both through are under attack. So what to do now? Here maybe Lucian's Italian rival is in plus position. So what Lucian played was 37 rook d2. So after 37 rook d2, there is nothing better for Torati than to capture on d7 with his knight. So after knight takes d7, rook takes d7, king to f2. Here. Chess engines initially agree with Turati's king to f2, but uh, at a greater depth prefers rook to c1. Maybe I mean that was bit inaccurate on in the time scramble they have shown in the movie. So all these moves are played in tremendous time scramble, and Turati had really played fast and. He Lucian also had to play really fast. So after this moves, we are going to agend the game. So not in this position, but after now uh, here there are two possibilities. After King F2 for Lucian, what he chose was Bishop C5. But there is another possibility. On by stockfish, that is knight c5, and after rook d1, this position also also is slightly better for white. So what he played in the game was bishop c5. After bishop c5, what is threatening is a simple thing. Now Turati had to move his king to f3. There is no other move because in this position, what is threatening is knight takes f4. So, because exploiting the pin on the white king, so king f3 was played, and during this time maybe it is really very clear that now white's advantage is not that great. So still white has some advantage compared to black, at least material advantage. So best move suggested by Stockfish for losing in that position was f5. f5 and he had another idea in his mind because he really wanted to play much more aggressive. So instead after having a brief look at this position. What he played was rook e7, and 
clearly hit the clock very hard. It was funny watching him hitting the clock really hard in the movie. So after rupee 7, Tirati played rook to c1. Now here also there are two possibilities. One suggested by Stockface is bishop c4 and after bishop c4 a line goes like this. a6 knight to a3 bishop to b7 knight to c2 what was played in the game was rook c1 and after a6 knight takes knight to c3 sorry and here around this time i think so here under tremendous time pressure maybe Luzin played very practical slightly dubious but very practical move knight takes f4 so here th it is shown that here there is very few seconds left on the clock of Thurati so he had to move really fast and what he did was that he calmly accepted this offer of knight sacrifice without calculating much but actually that was the losing move he takes f4 instead he has a brilliant defense here that may have finished the game for losing that is knight d5 so after knight d5 what happened is that Rook on c1 is now attacking bishop on c5 and knight is attacking rook. So there is no other defense for losing but to accept this knight that is offered as counter sacrifice. So after knight takes knight, rook, rook takes c5. This is still easily winning for losing, but no for Thurate, but under time pressure what he played was he takes f4 and this really is like came over scenario now because that was a blunder that was a real blunder under time pressure maybe the best continuation here is losing for white uh, heavy material loss and another there are only two possible answers for white after sealed move that is going to play tomorrow uh, I mean on the another day after the game so what was the sealed move of this game before adjournment that was brilliant rook e3 jack so now white has two moves King first may go to f2 or to g4. Now g4 practically is losing. If you have enough time, like a day, you can easily calculate that king g4 is losing as it leads to a forcing mate. So let's check king f2 first. King goes to f2. Then discover check rook takes c3 now king again has to move so king goes to c1 another check rook takes rook on c1 and here Luzin is easily winning and because of material advantage he is a rook plus or just a pawn so this surely loses also but what was played in the game was king f4 so in this position king g4 was played so f5 now king has only one square left that is king g7 king g5 so after this losing may have 
a winning position so this moves were played after adjournment on the another day rook check was the seed move by uh in so the game was an giant on second day after the seal move 43 rook e3 check and the chess champion actually died before the adjournment of the game uh, he rolled using so these moves were not actually played by him but by his wife Natalia after negotiations with Tivrati as the game adjourned and how let's check how the game was finished so after king g4 f5 check king has only one square to go king g5 king g7 brilliant move and now checkmate cannot be avoided because bishop goes to e7 and check delivers a check and is uh, forcing mate so how white can stop that can stop with knight d5 or knight e4 let's check knight e4 first knight e4. knight goes to e4 check knight goes to f6 this sub takes f6 and this is the checkmate so what was played during the game was knight d5 so after knight d5 rook to h3 a brilliant move threatening checkmates various checkmates so g takes h3 is particularly forced so here h6 check king to h4 and now instead of delivering checkmate on e7 Bishop goes to f2 to deliver the checkmate. So that is the end of our first game. Much more analysis available on my blog with a lot of diagrams and explanations. You can go through all of that if you want. So now we are going to have a look at another game. So this second game is between first world chess champion official chess champion William Steinitz versus German nobleman Bardelman that may be inspired director to make the movie Lewis in defense so let's have a look at this game this game has some myth around it that Bardelman left the tournament hall without resigning after a brilliant play by Steinitz but uh, there is a detailed explanation about what actually happened on my blog if you want to read you can follow the links below so let's have a look at this game between William Steinitz and Kurt von Bardalpan it was played in 1895 in famous Hastings tournament it was won by Pillsbury and this analysis was done by Sh with the help of uh, stop is very strong chess engine to verify the ending moves of the game so let's check out the opening e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 bishop c5 and after this opening moves actually we reach a very symmetrical and very equal position here what was played was knight c3 but what stockfish suggests is bishop d2 that is also a strong move so that the fault the line goes like this but this this another whole another theory so we need not to look into all of this 
so what was played was knight c3 and after that d5 so here e takes d5 knight takes d5 then stein it's castled now what was played in the game was bishop e6 but there is another possibility right b6 knight to b6 but uh, that also stockface uh, gives some slightly better position for white but what was played was bishop e6 and after bishop g5 that was slightly dubious move as all of the advantage is gone and now actually position is dead equal so after bishop retreats and blocks the jack exchange is on d5 square everything all almost all material is exchanged now apart from queen and rooks so there are two good moves here rook a to d1 one line goes like this and this maybe is better than what was the game continuation but still some advantage for white upon upon maybe what was played in the game was rook to c1 and here there is a very strong move knight to e6 so after knight to e6 what was played was rook h to c8 and this maybe was a blunder because uh, what was suggested by stockfish knight c6 leads to more equal position but anyways what was played was rook h to c8 queen g4 g6 knight to g5 delivering a check this is a beginning of a very beautiful continuation this knight is going to be there for very very long time and prize it can be captured for next coming 10 or 15 moves but it was never captured ironically so king moves to e8 square bang rook takes e7 now both moves are losing either capture by queen or king to f8 let's check queen takes e7 rook takes rook takes jack queen blockades the jack there is no other possibility so here white is clearly winning here white cannot capture on h7 because knight will be trapped after that but that this continuation white is easily winning and so let's go back here king f8 was played then stein it's beautifully played rook f7 check and now what we are going to see is a seesaw rook rook seesaw that is like a windmill in chess so check and here probably German nobleman left the hall the tournament hall at Hastings without resigning and probably this is because of uh, hopeless position the following continuation so this is really lost position for black and see knight is still there 
even after 20 moves so that is the end of this video please leave your comments thanks